great. So thank you guys for coming. Um, feel free um, if you want some information, you see something on a slide, drop me an email. And it's Malcolm at Castle Commercial Capital. I'll show my contact information at the end. And I can email you guys a copy of the presentation. So you don't have to worry about doing screenshots and all that stuff. Just drop me an email and I'll send it to you, no problem. All righty, so let, let's dive into it. First thing we want to talk about is what are the steps um, to building a business credit? Step one is the name. And I'm just going to say this to the point of you need to make sure that your business name is consistent everywhere. So that last third point, you want to make sure that, example, my firm is Castle Commercial Capital LLC. It needs to be spelled that way on all my documents, my licenses, my corporation papers, my articles with the state, my bank account. Um, I shouldn't have Castle Commercial one place and Castle Commercial Capital somewhere else and Castle Commercial Capital LLC or CCC somewhere else. You want to make sure it's, it's the same everywhere. Um, that seems like a basic thing, but you'd be amazed at how often I run into where someone has three, four addresses and three, four spellings of their business. Um, next thing is your corporate uh, entity, okay? Um, you need an entity. When we talk about business credit, we're talking about credit that's separate from you. If it's a sole proprietorship or a partnership, then by definition, it's still tied to you personally, legally. So for you to have business credit that's not in your name, not in your social security number, you need to either have a corporation or an LLC. And there's no two ways uh, uh, about that. Does someone have a question? No, okay. Let's talk about EIN. Um, most of us know that you should have a um, EIN that you get that from the irs.gov site. Um, uh, I would encourage uh, you guys, if you haven't done it yet, um, you know, don't fall for the scam of, hey, we'll set up your, your uh, corporation paperwork or your, your, you know, your, your corporate documents and we'll throw an EIN for another $35 or $40 or whatever it is. Like if you go to Legal Zoom, they got an option when you go to check out when you're doing your LLC paperwork that, hey, we'll file for your EIN for you, you know, for like literally an extra 40, 50 bucks. The EIN is free. It only takes like 15 seconds, literally, to get it off the IRS website. And they send out the letter, the official IRS SS4 letter, right away. So, um, and you want to make sure if you've got multiple EINs, right? Um, that you've had over the years, maybe for different companies, that you keep it straight that the same EIN that's on your bank account is the one that you're using on your tax papers. Um, please, for the love of God, don't let us catch that mistake. And I say us, I'm talking about us as a lender, uh, because that would be like the kiss of death on the deal. Website. A website, I'm going to leave it at this. A website today is more important than a business card. I can be at a meetup and someone asked me for my business card and I can be like, you know what? I'm sorry, I just passed out my last one, I'm out. But here, go to my website, castlecommercialcapital.com. Being out of a business card is, is forgivable. Not having a website is not forgivable. And when, you, when you're applying for business credit, one of the things the lender's gonna do is go check your website to see if you do what you say you're gonna do and that your address on your business bank account matches the address on your website. And the address on your SS4 matches the address on your website, okay? So you wanna make sure that everything on your site is current and accurate. The other thing you wanna do is also make sure you don't have extemporaneous, let's say, services or products that are not related to your core business on your website. So you don't want to be like, you know, if you guys remember that old show, Living Color, where the guy had like five businesses on one side of the card, he turned his business card over to another five on the back, right? You want to make sure on your website that if it's plumbing, it's plumbing. If it's a, you know, if you're a, a, a 
landscaper, it's, it's landscaping. You don't want landscaping and I repair your business credit and I sell legal aid and I'm a notary all on the same website. Um, that the, that's a real quick way to get a denial um, because they'll say they're not single in purpose, in business purpose, and therefore, you know, jack of all trades, master of none, we're not gonna loan these people money. So you wanna make sure that your website is clean. Now, if you have another business, have a link from one website to the other website, but don't mix and match, you know, different things all on the same, on the same one, unless they're really uh, uh, very closely related. So example, if I'm, you know, doing grass and then I got snow removal, that sort of makes sense. Um, but not if I'm doing, you know, if I'm cutting lawns at my lawn service website, and I'm also talking about how I'll bake you cakes for your wedding. So again, to some of you might think, well, nobody ever does that. Oh yeah, trust me, they do. And it's another way to, they'll say, well, they don't, they're not clear in their business purpose. So therefore we can fund them with business credit. Um, and, and, and I'll leave also on this before I leave this, sometimes less is more. So you don't need to have 50 million pages and, you know, 5,000 words of goods and services. It could be a one page clean and crisp site. That is actually better than a site that gives almost too much information that's too convoluted. So just as a, a little pro tip there. Um, any questions from anyone uh, thus far? We're all good, give me a thumbs up. So all, all you guys have your cameras on, so I don't know if you're still there or not. Thank you, Cassandra. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about why a business line of credit for real estate as a landlord. Number one is due diligence expenses. So let's say you're buying another house and you have to come out of pocket for the appraisal, you know, or you need a property inspection. You know, rather than coming out of pocket, you've got your business line of credit that you can tap for that. One of the, kind, one of the reasons I'm going over this today is one of the big mistakes I see a lot of investors make with their funding is they only fund their real estate endeavor based on the property in front of them at the moment. So they're strictly looking at mortgage, 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 mortgage on each individual property. And they're not actually acquiring funding for the real estate company that's operating all of these properties. And, and when the expenses come up, people are dipping into um, uh, their personal credit cards to fund those incidental uh, expenses that can sometimes um, pop up. And so uh, what we're talking about is having a line of credit in the name of the business is not tied to you. Uh, obviously repairs, you know, if there's unexpected repairs that come up, you know, having your own business line of credit is a, a good idea. Um, gives you just more flexibility rather than using uh, your cash. Uh, rent. Another reason that you may have a business line of credit is sometimes uh, you may have a mortgage on a property and tenant doesn't pay their rent, but you got a mortgage payment or you got taxes that are due, or maybe you have an assessment that you didn't plan on that came out of the blue. And while you're fighting with the city or whatever, it might just be prudent. Let me just take care of this on my business line of credit and not tie up my cash uh, with that. The other thing is if you have a business line of credit that's tied to a merchant account, you can have your tenants pay you by credit card uh, with your own merchant account. And so that's another way to have tighter control over uh, your cash flow. And I know some of you guys that are landlords, being able to take credit cards or debit cards um, has been a lifesaver for a lot of your tenants uh, during this time. And lastly, um, establishing uh, business credit for additional and greater funding as your portfolio mm -hmm. grows. So in other words, you get a business line of credit, again, separate from you, as a way to springboard into greater funding. Because when you talk about non-recourse financing for real estate, and you're talking about extra commas now, 
um, you're talking hundreds of thousands or, or you know, millions of dollars worth of real estate, and you need bigger and greater funding, they're going to want to know what kind of funding has the company done because at that level, it's not in your name anymore. It's going to be in the company name. So you, want to, you would have wanted to have already established business credit in the name of the business at this level before you go ask for this level of funding. Um, does anyone uh, think of any other types of um, reasons or expenses that you would use for a business line of credit as a landlord? I mean, to float another deal, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're talking about unsecured. Yeah. Right? And so the one thing about, uh, uh, is that Corey? That's Brian. Oh, Brian. Um, one other thing ab about that too, Brian, is that with commercial uh, funding, we don't always care where the money came from. So if you took, you know, uh, $20,000 off your business line of credit to fund the ac another acquisition, doesn't really matter to us. You know, um, it, might, it might matter to a bank bank, because usually a bank wants to source every single dollar you're putting into a deal. Uh, but a lot of private lenders, uh, like with Castle, we don't, you know, as long as you got the money, we don't really care where it came from. You know, I had a guy bought a, a really, really profitable um, four unit last year in Oxford. And um, I want to say forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 of his acquisition money came from a line of credit that he had available. So, you know, we didn't care you know, as long as he put it down. So any other reason you would have it, Soren? Oh, come on. Jason. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you're in a loud place. Okay, I get you. <laughs> and and I didn't hear the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Any other reason why a landlord would have a business line of credit? Uh, so we had one uh, based upon the fact that we uh, had uh, antenna towers in our building. So we were able to leverage um, a contract separate from the building, but part of the building uh, with AT&T, so cash flow. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about marketing, right? What if you have a marketing campaign um, that you wanna implement, a business line of credit as a way to fund that marketing campaign without utilizing your cash? Now, if you have the cash, that's fine, you know, um, but cash is king. And as you guys know, you know, I've, I've been preaching this for a long, 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 long time. You know, cash is king, credit is queen, <laughs> right? And, and you know, the, the one thing about cash, once I give it out, I can't get it back. You know, I got to regenerate it from someplace else. You know, so sometimes you want to be really diligent about what I spend cash with versus, you know, what I do uh, with credit. You know, like one of the things, you know, I'm crazy about is um, all my cash back rewards. So I know on my credit cards, who's giving me a bonus on gas and who's giving me a bonus on restaurants, right? And I go to pull out a card. I'm thinking, wait a minute, this quarter, this guy's giving me 2% on this restaurant. This guy's giving me one and that's who I'm using, you know, um, and some of these com companies, <coughs> excuse me, um, like Discover had the 5% cash back on everything the first year, you know, and then they bonus you again at the end of the year. Holy moly, that was ridiculous. You know, I, I was putting my mom's rent on my Discover card <laughs> that year. You see, give me the cash. She didn't care. She's like, Mike, I'll take care of your rent. You know, I put it on, on my Discover card. I take it, pay Discover, you know, the money, but I got that cash back. It was awesome. You know, it was like a free tank of gas every month. It was nuts, you know. So let's, let's move on. Let's talk about what to look for in a business line of credit. 
Um, one, if you can, you should try to get a business line that doesn't have a hard credit inquiry. You know, a business line should be separate from you. And so it shouldn't hurt you um, to have access. You know, one of the things you want to be real careful about is a lot of banks and lenders market a business line. And I use that in air quotes. It's really a personal credit card with, the, with really business on the card because you're personally guaranteeing it. It's on your credit every month. If you use it too much, it causes your utilization to go up too high, which will cause your score to go down. You know, and there's nothing business about it except for the name on the credit card. So you want to be, you know, uh, uh, aware of that. It should, you should be able to get it based on the business um, and without an impact on you. Now they'll check you out, you know, um, you know, make sure, you know, we're not lending to people of low character, you know, usually we're looking for fraud and stuff like that, but generally it shouldn't have an impact on you. Um, qualification should be based on minimum documentation. You know, you shouldn't have to submit tax returns and W-2s and, you know, all that stuff for a business line of credit. It should, it should be minimal documentation. Um, easy access to the funding, you know, which is, which is key. Can I access the funds by transferring dollars off the line directly into my business bank account? Or can I write checks off the line? Or can I use a credit card off the line? You know, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I almost never use checks anymore. You know, almost everything I pay for, I either do through a wire or through an ACH, or I use a, you know, a credit account tied to, you know, my business bank account. I almost never, you know, write a check. I, I got one check um, that has got voided on it that I set up all these accounts. That check has got more mileage on it than anything else. Right, because I'm setting everything else on automatic or just the ability whenever I need to, hey, just go pay this. You know, when we have to pay for property inspections, um, I got an ACH set up with the inspection service. You know, I don't write them a check for, for, for those fees. Um, it should have the ability to grow as your business grows. So as you guys know, with some credit cards, the, the credit card line is only for so much. And then if you need above that, you have to graduate to a different account, to a different line. So this line, the entry line they started you on is only good up to $5,000 or $3,000 or 10, whatever some number is. And then if you need to go bigger than that, that's a whole separate account. You know, the, the bad part about that is the payment history you built up, you lose if you close that other account and you don't really want to do that unless you absolutely positively, you know, have to. Um, so you want a line that no matter where I am in my business cycle, it's going to be able to grow with me um, as my business grows. And then lastly, of course, the funding needs to be in the name of your business without a personal guarantee. That's a true business uh, uh, line. Any questions about what you should look for in a business line of credit? And this is, you know, this is not specific to any company. This is just the industry is what I'm talking about. Anyone have any comments? A quick nope. question, Michael. Maybe uh, yep. we'll talk about this a little later, but um, with the climate as it is right now, does that affect, has that changed the uh, business line of credit availability? Is it going down? Is it going up? Or? Uh, truthfully, it does depend on the institution. There are some banks that have uh, pulled back on their lines. Um, there's some that just sort of froze them. You know, they didn't, they're not decreasing your line or canceling it, but they're just not, you know, they weren't doing increases during April, May, <laughs> June of this year when COVID was, was exploding, you know. And what's happened since then, though, is most lenders have said, you know what, most people paid their bills this is not going to be as bad an impact as we think it is. So we're, you know, we're going to be okay. Good question, Harper. Uh, one question, Malcolm, with respect to the uh, credit inquiry. Um, 
for a new business, how, how important is a, uh, like if you have no credit or having a done on Bradstreet report? Oh, it's, it's very important. It's very important. Um, and that's, and this is one of the hard parts. It's sort of like you guys have been to my business credit seminars. I, we used to do back and we see each other face to face. Um, I would talk about how, you know, it's almost like when you're 19 and you haven't financed a lawnmower and you try to go to the Ford dealership and get a Mustang, you know, and they're like, Oh, please, you know, find someone else, <laughs> you know, find someone else to finance you first, then come back. Um, you can run into that sometimes with a lender when it comes to a business line, because if they see no credit, then they're like, okay, you got to find someone else to start you off first. It's generally when there's nothing there, that can be tough. That honestly can be tough. There are credit lines out there that are available that will fund a startup. Um, usually if you go to like Chase, Bank of America, Co-America, your standard brick and mortar bank, usually there's a time in business called a TIB. Have you guys heard of that before? No. It's a time, you call it TIB. TIB is time in business requirement. So they may want to see six months, 12 months, 24 months in business before they give you a, now let me be clear. I'm talking about an unsecured business line of credit. If your business line is secured by real estate or something, or some other type of hard asset, that's something different. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about an unsecured business line that you can get cash on and use for any purpose. Um, Malcolm, mm -hmm. I have a quick question. Um, PayPal working capital, um, can, would that be considered um, a line of credit, business line of credit? You pay it back, you know how, you know how it works where you pay mm -hmm. it back over a length of time um, and they just take a percentage of your sales. Mm -hmm. to pay, you know, a percentage of your sales from that point. Right, right, right. It's actually not a bad account. The only thing I don't like about PayPal credit in general um, is uh, unless somebody's it, heard... Go, go ahead, D. You want to say something? Malcolm, you cut out on the answer. Oh, okay. Yes. I, yeah, I saw that my, my little thing. Was, um, the only thing I would say I don't like about PayPal credit is that as far as I know, um, last time I checked, PayPal doesn't report to anybody. So they don't report, but I'm saying where we're, we're talking about uh, time and business and not being able to see. So right. um, can, I, can, you, can I use the PayPal lines of credit that we use to expand purchase equipment and things of that nature, can we take that to a lender? Or because they have not reported, is that as if nothing happened at all? Exactly, exactly. I, I, I got a PayPal credit card and um, I don't know, I had it maybe six months or something, nine months, something like that. And um, they gave me an increase and then I, I I never used it. And then I said to them, oh, by the way, who do you guys report to? You know, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, we don't report to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not talking about like FICO and, you know, TransUnion. I'm talking about business credit, like DMB, Experian Business, Equifax Business. Anybody? Oh, no, we don't report to anybody. I'm like, what? So nobody knows, and I'm not getting any credit, business credit wise, for this account. She goes, not at this time, I'm sorry. I was like, yeah, I'm sorry too. <laughs> you know, because, you know, if it, if it's Casper the Friendly Ghost, I mean, it doesn't help you, <laughs> you know, grow into something else. You know, um, I mean, I want my bills. If I could have, and I'm just maybe weird this way, but if I could have every bill I had show up on my credit report so that all of that credit history and payment history could be up there to keep my credit outstanding, I love that. You know, but when it's business, unfortunately, and we've talked about this at the business credit seminar we used to do, um, only, you know, less than 5% of businesses report to Dun & Bradstreet or Experian Business. So one of the first things you should ask is who do you report to? Because, if, if, I mean, you may still take the credit because you want the credit, but if they can't assist you with building later, 
it, and they're not going to take your word for it. I mean, you, you kind of need to have it on the record, you know, to, to be frank. So, um, um, but let me go specifically and talk about when should you set up a business line, right? Anyone care to guess when you should do it? When you set up the LLC. When you start your business? Before you need it. <laughs> Before you need it, right? <laughs> you cannot, there's an old saying in the, in the business, in the, in the lending business, right? No one lends to someone who needs money. Can I get an amen for somebody? <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> they do not lend to someone who needs money. Now, if you've got a growing enterprise and you're already profitable, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, we'll lend you money. But if you're like, man, I'm broke. <laughs> My business is struggling. I could really use some money to help me out right now through this tough time. They're like, wow. You know, Capuchin Kitchen's down the street, dude. I, I wish you luck. <laughs> right? The, mm -mm, not going to happen. So you need to get it before you need it and think about we talked about this last year you know i expected based on the the macroeconomic numbers that we would be in recession this year right and i had talked about that last year because i kept saying what hoard cash hoard cash hoard cash hoard cash because if you have a recession you learned this from 10 years ago those who have the most cash on hand are able to weather the economic downturn better than someone who doesn't have cash. And getting to the point you made earlier, D, they're best positioned to take advantage of an opportunity that comes up because someone else lost out when they got cash, right? Now, we were February of this year, pre-COVID, um, we had just eked ourselves into uh, the start of our recession. And then COVID happened and just, you know, we just went off off a cliff, you know, uh, needless, needless to say. But the numbers were looking like we were headed that way anyway. And so you want to establish your line of credit before a downturn, right? Before a poor economic cycle. You want to get that set up, um, you know, again, when you're profitable, when business is good and you don't need it. So we have a business line of credit. I want to go over some specifics of our, our program uh, for you guys. And this is a program. It's not the program. Um, but it's, I think it's a pretty good one, or else I wouldn't bring it to you. Um, but it's something to consider. First thing, it's an unsecured uh, business line of credit with an initial access amount up to $10,000, OK? You can transfer funds directly to your bank account or access them to an associated business MasterCard that comes with the account. Um, there's no personal guarantee, duh. Um, there's no hard credit inquiry. Now, initially, you are qualified based on your personal credit. But whether you're actually approved or uh, denied, there is no hard credit inquiry that's going to hit your personal credit report. There's no personal credit reporting. All the payment history is reported to Dun & Bradstreet and Experian Business. And there's no bank state statements or tax returns uh, required. You know, uh, at, this, at this stage, any questions on any of these six points I got up here? Yes. Uh, I don't see the FICO score needed. Uh, good question. That's because there isn't one. Um, yeah, I know, Jason. I know. I know. I'm not. I promise. Um, <laughs> no, there isn't a fight. If, now, if someone has a 500 FICO score, will we approve them for a business line of credit? Yes. Oh, However, they will not get $10,000. Okay, they're going to they're going to start out with a very small amount. And I'm, 500 is probably going to get you like 300 bucks to be honest, which is not obviously enough to work with, you know, to do anything with, but what it is, it's a start. 
it's a start. It's in your business name. You are still responsible personally for that 300 bucks. But if you do a good payment history and you build up, you can get approved to a higher level. And then what happens is when someone's got low FICO, just let's sell bad credit, call for what it is, right? Every 50 points that they raise their score, we'll approve them for a higher amount. Again, as long as they've had good payment history. Okay, so, but, the, but to me, the big thing about that is, it's not that it's 300 bucks or, you know, that gonna get a lot, but they will get something to build on. And it's not, this is not a bad credit account where we're gonna give them, you know, um, 300 bucks and the most is gonna grow to is 500 bucks. And then they gotta elevate to a whole nother account. The same account can go all the way up to actually $100,000. And we're going to talk about that on the on the on the next slide. So let me quick get question. to that. Good yep. question, Malcolm. Would this particular one be something for somebody that's just starting to build? Now, maybe I missed that part. Or yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely would be. You get approved with a simple application, and we basically just confirm your identity and that of your uh, business. So the documentation that you need is your driver's license to confirm it's you, avoid it, check on your business bank account um, to confirm you're actually in business with a bank. Three, your articles of incorporation or articles of organization, uh, depending on if you've got a corporation or LLC. And then lastly, four is a copy of your EIN letter uh, from the IRS. You know, because again, this is the name of in your business. And so going back to that first slide, you wanna make sure you're consistent with all your documentation lining up. The funding grows with your business. Initially, you're eligible for up to $10,000. You're eligible for an increase every three months if you want to. And if there's a maximum of 100,000 if you submit uh, financial documentation. So getting to that uh, question, who asked the low FICO question? Was that you, Jason? I think. Um, but getting to that point of, of um, the low FICO, we had someone who uh, initially they got approved with $500. And then once they submitted business bank accounts or business, excuse me, business bank statements, um, their uh, increase went to 75000 So this is not one of those situations uh, where you start out small and it takes you five years to get up to something much larger. And again, this is unsecured. So that's 100,000 to 75,000 unsecured. Now, if you've, you know, I got a question about them. Yep. Uh, now, if you've got good credit yep. and you've got a uh, pretty decent history on your business or your business actually already has a, a couple of credit cards, maybe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it likely you can become eligible for more initially? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you got, you know, like I said, initially, um, it goes up to ten thousand dollars. So if someone has if someone has good credit, and um, you know their business is right and tight, they could get the the uh, seventy five hundred, eight thousand, ten thousand dollars. That's not an issue. You know, it just it de it depends on the totality of it how much they get. You know, but the thing I like about it is. You know, again, assuming one had "quote unquote" poor credit, going from five hundred dollars to seventy-five thousand dollar increase in one account. Who else does that? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm just saying. You know, you, you I'm not me. saying no one else does, but I just haven't seen it. Go ahead. What was my point exactly? I have not seen that anywhere else. Yep. And so I don't have to worry about, you know, opening up another account da, 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 da. as my business grows, as my profitability grows, you know, th this will grow with me. Um, you have an easy repayment, auto repayment. It's automatically repaid from your merchant account. Um, if you need one, uh, cause you don't have one, it's easy to set one up. Um, uh, D, I think you mentioned about that PayPal working capital. 
Wasn't that you that talked about that, D? Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah, same type of thing. Same type of concept. Okay, I mean, you don't have to pay. You could actually write a check if you wanted to. Um, but generally, set it up to be paid out of your merchant account. Okay, um, which means, you know, your ability to take uh, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover, and Visa, and all that stuff, again, which helps your business grow. It's another way to document your profitability. You know, and some of you guys that do B2B, um, uh, we'll find that you'll have clients that would actually uh, prefer to pay that invoice, you know, through their MasterCard tied to their um, business account because it's just quicker, faster, they don't have to worry about it, you know, and Lord knows we can't trust the mail system right now, boy. It is not prompt. I mean, it's ridiculous. I'm sending stuff to Jason and the mail goes to Iowa, to Nebraska, then comes back down to him, you know, in Melvindale. And he's like, what's up? <laughs> I'm in <an> Adrian. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is crazy right now. All the seniors I know, they all ticked off. <laughs> all their stuff is late. I mean, it's, if you mail something, man, you better – Put like a three week time period on that bad boy because if you try to say yeah i need it there by friday and i'm gonna drop in the mail by monday you rolling the dice taking your chances so having that ability to take payments instantly and i like to pay quick you know i don't have a problem i'm not one of those people that's like okay let me float the check and then all that stuff it's like if i got the money i'm gonna pay i'm gonna pay period Staff hey, Malcolm, this Cassandra. Hey, I'm Cassandra. sorry. Go ahead. Um, so the PayPal working credit card is not good because it doesn't report, but it is useful for the merchant thing. Mm -hmm. I th it does, because it, it'll tie, if you have a merchant account, you can make the payments on the line out of the merchant account. Okay, and how do you get the merchant account? Well, like in this situation, our setup's the same way. We get you a merchant account. You oh, know, okay. It's it's really it's really easy. And 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 right now there's like 15 ways to set up a merchant account. I mean, you yeah. you can take you can do virtual, you can have a setup as a link on your website, you can do the little card reader, you know, you can do the full machine if you had a merchant a store or something like that. Um you know, there's a lot of different ways to set up, you know, like we have one and we use virtual, you know, so someone can give me their information and I just do it through my internet interface and just type in the numbers and, pop, 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 and it just runs it, you know, easy peasy. So okay. the, the thing uh, that I know landlords who are using this type of account, the thing they like about it is the money's instant. There's none of that checks in the mail or I don't know what happened or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You know, and and it's not a third party like, you know, like some third party apps. It's like they're doing it through your merchant account. Okay, okay. so it's 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 directly to you. You know, anyone ever have a dispute with someone with Cash App? You know, mm -mm. Cash App is terrible. You know, they're great when they work. <laughs> when they don't work, their customer service sucks. You know, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't a technical term. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> you're like, well, what happened? Well, he said he sent it. And then, how you showing the money left? Well, I didn't get it. Well, what happened to the money? Well, I don't know. You know, and if somebody hacks your Cash App account, you know, that's, you know, well, sorry, I didn't do it. Well, too bad. You know. Uh, one of my guys, it took him four weeks to fix the problem. And it, uh, it it cost them about seven hundred dollars. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. So you got a merchant account that's in your name. You're do you're doing the charges. You know you got control of the process because when you do a third party, you're counting on the tenant, right? I'm talking about being landlord right now. You're counting on the tenant to say they put the thing in and they sent it, right? When you do the charge, right? 
yourself, you know you got the information and you know when you put it through, right? And you know if it was denied or not. So there's, there's something to be said about having control over the process. Um, and then the last, oh, the second thing I had, second from last thing, staff credit cards. If you got key employees that are going to make purchases on your behalf, you've got control over that. You can give them a, a card against the account and they have a preset spending limit so they can't go over, say, $500 or they can't go over $1,000 or something like that to protect your, 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 your downside risk. And then lastly, we got like a 90% approval rate on this thing. Um, low FICO requirement, we talked about that earlier. Um, startups are accepted. There's no time and business requirement. And now let me tell you when people get denied, okay? They get denied for usually two reasons. Either A, the business um, is real shady and, and um, it comes through in the background check that the business is shady. You know, there's some businesses we can't do. Like we can't do adult related, you know, we can't do strip clubs, you know, that kind of stuff. We can't do marijuana. Um, we can do cannabis. So if somebody has a cannabis store and they're selling cannabis oil, you know, or that kind of stuff, that's okay. But actual medical marijuana or recreational marijuana specifically, we can't do. Uh, the other big reason that people um, get denied is fraud. You know, we do a check. Remember we talked about confirming one's identity with those basic documents, right? When we do the identity check and um, they can't answer the identity questions correctly because, you know, they can't remember what lie they told last time, hmm. you know, they get denied. Now, honestly, we give them two shots to fix it. So, because sometimes, you know, people do make a mistake and they're like, okay, when did I start? You know what? I found it Castle not in 2009, it was 2007. Oh, that was my, my bad. I was thinking about something else. I got my dates screwed up. Okay. You know, we can reset it and have them call again and go through the, the fraud check. Um, but you fell that bad boy twice, that's it. You're denied and there's no going back to mama, you know. Um, you know, I heard a, um, a guy say once, um, you know, you're an adult when you get yourself in a situation, your mommy and your daddy can't get you out of. <laughs> I find that to be very true. Um, so let's talk about costs. Nothing's free in life. So let's talk about what the costs are. First is a monthly maintenance fee, $9 and 97 cents uh, a month. Um, there's a small enrollment fee um, that's $99.97 uh, um, uh, to enroll, okay? Um, it is refunded if for some reason someone's not approved, um, but most people are, so it's usually not a, an issue. The interest rate is prime plus 14, which is right now is 17.25%, which for unsecured Business line of credit without a personal guarantee, that is a fantastic rate. You know, unsecured money is going to be comparable to credit cards because there's no security. There's no assets um, behind it. We're relying on your word and your character to, to pay it back. Um, getting a question that Hartford asked earlier, um, you can build right away. So someone can be literally a startup. And as long as they have the articles and the EIN letter, and the voided check, they can start building uh, business credit. And then, you know, it's a link you go to, you apply online, it's one page, you know, it's super easy. Um, it usually takes um, 24 hours uh, to get approval and then you get access to the cash on your line in three to five days. So relatively simple. So Malcolm, that's 17 and a quarter, that's um, per annum or what is that? Yes. The compounding. Yes. Okay. That's correct. Okay. That is correct. That is correct. And so um, uh, any questions about the, the rate or the fees or anything like that? So for this introductory one, or that's just what I'm calling it, it's 10,000. Like if somebody was to fill out this application and their information looked a little better, 
would they possibly qualify for more than 10,000 or just for this particular program, the max is 10,000? Well, the, the max is 10,000 based purely on credit. Okay. So if someone, um, and, and it's not set Hartford. So let's say someone got approved for 3,500, let's say as their credit got better every three months, they can ask for a, a increase. Okay, and by the way, every time you request an increase, it's still not a hard inquiry on your credit report. Okay, once they cap out at 10,000, if they want more than 10,000, again, this is unsecured, then at that point, they can submit business uh, bank statements to verify their income. And, and, they, and they can do that right away. So like that example I mentioned earlier, where the guy had 500, you know, because his credit was kind of eh, and he only got 500 bucks, he submitted business bank statements and he immediately went to 75,000. So it's up yeah. to you how fast um, your credit line in increases because it depends on the performance of your business and what kind of cash flow that you show you can support. Because obviously, you know, we don't want to get someone in trouble, right? If somebody's only cash flowing, you know, $1,000 a month, you know, we say, okay, we're not going to give you a $50,000 credit line, <laughs> you know, because it, it, your payments, by the way, on the credit line is going to be 2% of whatever the, the loan balance is, right? To give you a, a benchmark. Just like similar to what like a credit card would be, okay? So there's my email. Um, you guys can send me an email if you like, and I'll send you a copy of this presentation um, for your own edification if you like. Um, any other questions about how this how this program works? Malcolm, I just have one question. This mm -hmm. is D. Yep, so D. my SS, hey, my S was four. I've been in business well over four five years in Michigan. Um, and of course we've moved. Um, so I need to go and have the address change before you want me to apply. Mm -hmm. is, is everywhere else the address current? Yes, it's just the SS4 and I've never had a change of address before then. Um, okay. I, you know what I mean? I've been consistent with the same address. Okay. But I know you said that was a, uh, that was one of the caveats for application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's okay if, if like, because you, like the SS4 is like an original document, right? So if you change, you can have like one change like that, but you just don't want five different addresses on all your stuff. So no, no. I've only, even with the state, you can see that the address that's actually on the filing of the right. SS04 was the original address on my state filing. So there hasn't been a lot of change in there, variation. Right, right. right. So if we can document that, that won't be an issue. Okay. Yeah, just on that one thing, that I won't be a problem. You know, we just wouldn't want to have a separate address on the voided check, a separate address on the SS4, a separate address on the articles. It's like, come on now, something's, we don't know where you're at. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. And Malcolm, mm -hmm. um, with respect to having a website, is it necessary to have a website um, or a web presence prior to fulfilling one of the application uh, processes? Or it, it, at this stage with your, with this um, LOC, it's, it's not necessary to have a, a, a web presence? Uh, no, because it's a startup. It's, it's not because we allow startups. So when I was talking earlier, I was also talking generically about all business lines of credit. Mm -hmm. So most banks and lenders, you, you can't have, you, you need to have that. Um, in this particular situation, but see, most business lines of credit won't go to startups. Right. So in, in our situation, we will allow that not to have a, a, a website, you know, so that won't be an issue. Okay, great. And how often do you report to um, Dun & Brad and Experian? 
That's a good question. Um, I believe that's quarterly. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. But that's also, Corey, um, that's also one of those things that can change. So it, it depends on, um, uh, and, and, and I want to sort of throw this caveat on this whole thing, is this is as of right now today, okay? This program can change, and they always allow themselves the ability, to, you know, the underwriters, to make adjustments based on the market um, uh, at any time as long as they give you notice, once you get the account. So honestly, I don't expect um, the account to, to, be, to be in its present form um, forever. You know, I think this is right now, um, but it would not surprise me. I wouldn't be shocked. And, and, you know, I'm taping this, so I'm telling you guys this truthfully. Um, six months from now, if they get rid of the no personal guarantee and they make a personal guarantee that comes with it, don't be surprised. You know, or if they come back and say, we want a six-month time and business requirement, don't be surprised. You know, um, that's as of right now uh, uh, today. Now, I don't expect this to change next week. Don't misunderstand me. But long term, um, usually what happens with lenders, and this is sort of inside baseball for you guys, when they want more business, they open up the criteria. And at some point when they say, okay, profitability now needs to be a priority over client acquisition, then they tighten up the criteria and they start saying stuff like you got to have a 700 credit score or you got to have 24 months time in business, that kind of thing. You know, so right now they're aggressively growing the client base in this account. So that's why things are the way they are. But it will at some point in the future, you know, uh, tighten up. And it's like like anything else. If you're in, you're grandfathered in. And if you're not, you got to go with whatever the current conditions that apply. Malcolm, this is Cassandra again. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have a business account with Bank of America. I do not have any checks. And I'm in the process of, because right now I'm using my home address, you know, for my business. And um, so I didn't want to get any checks with my home address on it. So now I do have a business address that I want to use. I just haven't went through the steps to, you know, put the business address where it needs to be, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. So um, timing purposes. I, I, so I do need that business, that voided business check for the application. So should I just get the business account? I mean, get the checking account with, um, I mean, get the checks with my home address and worry about changing all the other stuff later? Or how would you approach that? Well, um, there's a couple ways to go. One way is to, you know, obviously change everything over to your business address and then mm -hmm. apply. Okay. okay. Uh, I bank personally, uh, I bank with level one bank. Uh, that's all my business banking. I got a personal with them as well. Um, okay. And level one, if it, I've got hmm, um, maybe 10 checks and I've only used mm -hmm. one of them. No, I use two of them. You know, because I just don't use checks. I just hardly ever do in my business. So um, with level one, if I ever need a check, I just go in and they print me off one. Mm, and the okay. only thing it, the only thing the check is missing is it doesn't have like the check number on it uh -huh. you know but it has everything else and i just go <laughs> and usually they'll, they'll print me off like six at a time something like that and i you know i may two might be stretching it i may have gone through like five <laughs> but they just print me off one so i would go in and ask bank of america um, if they can print you off a check oh. um, as an option, you know, and, it, and if they can't, if they say you have to go through the whole process of ordering it and go through all that stuff, then you might as well change everything else. Okay. Or I can, or I can open up account with level one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cause I've been yeah. looking at them for a while. I just haven't made any 
you know, any effort to, to do anything <laughs> I, lately. You know, I, I like them. You know, I, I, I bank, um, um, I hold a meetup, uh, I used to hold a meetup in, the, in noon, in noon time, um, uh, once a month at the level one bank in Bloomfield Hills. Mm. And that's where I set up on Maple and Telegraph. Okay. And one of the advantages, and for some of you guys who maybe you don't have a solid relationship, one of the unique things you only get with level with, with level one bank is if you're a customer, they allow you to use their conference rooms, no charge. Oh, that's cool. Ah. So I, you know, I held my meetups there because well, actually originally when I set that meetup, my co-organizer was like a VP with the bank. Okay. And then when they left the bank, um, they, they couldn't go into level one no more because they left the bank and it was an issue. <laughs> but uh, the bank didn't mind me still having my meetups there. And I was like, well, that's kind of nice. I'm not a, remember, they're still honoring the thing. And then I just felt, you know what, I should be, you know, I should bank with them if I want to use their, their conference room, you know, twice a month or whatever I was doing. Um, and, it, you know, it didn't happen that often because uh, I had my own space. But I can see for a lot of people that being cool when you need a, a, a during banking hours, of course, but when you need to have a meeting, you got a really nice conference room. You can hook your laptop up to the big screen TV on the wall and whatnot. And, you know, it's quiet. But to me, the big thing is the personal service. You know, when I go there, it's, hey, Mr. Turner, how you doing? There's only like five people that work in there. You know, they're not like a chase. Um, and I, you know, my wife banks at Chase, so I bank at Chase. You know, Chase doesn't know me from Adam. And I've been with, you know, me and my wife have been married 23 years. And Chase doesn't know me from Adam. It's, but level one, me and a branch manager, first name basis. I mean, they're cool. The thing you got to get used to is that um, they allow you to use your ATM anywhere. So they don't have a lot of branches. I think they only got like six branches in, in Metro Detroit. But you can use your ATM at anyone. And whatever the fee is, they reimburse you the next day. So when I first switched there for the first six months, and if I needed cash, I think, oh, I got to drive to 11 one branch to get cash. You know, now I, I'm like, I don't even think about it. I just go wherever I want to. Wherever the closest machine is, or wherever, it doesn't matter. I don't care what they charge me they're going to reimburse it in my account the next day. So, you know, that gets to be actually kind of cool because you never think about where you got to go. You just go wherever. Thank you. Yep. Yep. And they, they have a, a no fee. They do have a no fee business checking account. That's actually pretty cool. So something else to think about. Okay. So I, I want to sum up, um, um, the advantage of a business line of credit for a landlord is the fact that when it comes to the incidental expenses that just comes with real estate and you guys, you know, with real estate there's always expenses for something, you know, you're able to have those things paid on an account that's separate from yours. That's not tied to you personally. Credit doesn't affect you. And, you know, obviously with, with our program, um, the thing that's different is the fact that we'll do startups. People will do a lot of t time in business. This can be your first business credit account and we'll set you up, you know? Um, and it, again, you may not have a huge line if you come to us like a newborn baby, but we're willing to start you and grow with you as you grow. And I think that's pretty cool. You know, and I definitely know what's unique in the marketplace right now. So on that note, as uh, any other questions before we close out? Good question. Maybe you answered it, but um, is there anything else that can be uh, submitted other than a check? It's, I'm in the same issue where I don't even use checks. Yeah, no. No, there isn't. It's got to be, okay. they, that, that's how they verify um, that it's an actual, because there needs to be a business account tied to the line of credit for the transfers and stuff like that. So 
Um, and that's how they establish you, honestly, as a real business. You know, you think about the EIN, the articles, the voided check, all of those things are there to establish that it's a solid business. Again, we're not asking for bank statements. We're not asking for business tax returns, you know, but we're just saying you got to have proof of a business uh, bank account. Actually, actually, now that I think about it, Hartford. Yeah. I mean, can uh, I give you the routing number and the. Yeah. Actually, number? actually, now, now that I'm thinking about it, I think there is a way. I think, Cassandra, you asked this question as well. I think there is a way if you have a business bank statement, um, we might be able to accept a business bank statement. Oh, no. Was that Ora Lee that asked that question earlier? No, it was me in the, in that sense. Yes. Okay. Cassandra. Was you Cassandra? Okay. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I think we can use a as an exception. I think we can get a, a business bank statement as an exception to uh, the voided check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So if um. If you're interested, you want more information, go to castlecommercialcapital.com. Uh, um, you'll see our site. Uh, actually, I want to invite all you guys to go to it. We completely, from the floor up, redesigned our website. Yeah, um, I kept like two photos from the old website just to, you know, for nostalgia purposes. Um, but you can see all the, the information on our loan programs, our business credit programs as far as business credit cards, business line of credit, uh, business term loans, SBA, our real estate loans, all that information is there. And we have a uh, web form so you can apply directly online without and load up documents online without having to send everything through email. Uh, this document, I mean, this program is actually online. Uh, you just hit the apply button. Um, and um, a lot of the same information that I covered here is in there. Um, but when you apply, it'll be quick and easy. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Most of the stuff that I talked about today applies to all business lines of credit, not just specific to us. Um, um, but you just want to be careful when you go about it. If you need any advice, feel free to give me a buzz. Uh, some of you guys know I'm available. I'm easy to find. You know, I mean, look, I have a YouTube channel. I want to encourage you guys to subscribe. We got 36 videos. We just loaded a couple of new videos in the last couple of weeks. Um, um, you know, between Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. <laughs> um, if you can't find us, man, you ain't looking. <laughs> we're definitely available. And we come up on the first few pages of the Google search, Google search for commercial loans. So um, I look forward to seeing you guys and look forward to our next meeting, uh, which will be next Thursday. So you guys have a great week, a great weekend. Be safe, be prosperous, and be blessed. You guys have a good day. Thanks, Malcolm. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for showing up.